Hey friends, so last week I reviewed Origami Dare and Death Battle during a live stream and man, there's some crazy folds. And yeah, I'm live streaming right here on YouTube almost every Friday evenings and night times. Definitely check them out. Hey friends, welcome to the Origami Dan Death Battle. So what is the Origami Dan Death Battle? Well, it's a 1v1 competition between origami designers where the two designers pick one topic and they both design something to compete against each other. At the end of the round, um, the community will vote on which fold is best. And the losers will unfortunately go home and the winners will compete for a prize going up the brackets till the very end where one person will reign supreme as the champion of the death battle. So each participant has a set number of days to create a brand new design from scratch that relates to the topic that they think can beat their opponent. Let's see what people submitted for round one. For round one, um, we actually had a lot of people join in. Everyone had to do a preliminary round where they submitted the design just to join. But here's the actual battles. So looks like we have 11 battles and three of them are actually um, or two of them are 1v1v1s and we just had to, to do that to um, not have a bunch of buy rounds in the future where it'd be kind of strange for the brackets so round one is what it is okay battle one has a theme of plants and it is a blue daze vine versus a bonsai tree um, so first up we have reza with the blue days vine. So it's Reza versus Hot Wheels. Uh, Reza, this is pretty cool. I assume you might have like thrown up the, the origami while you took the picture to kind of make a cool whole thing and then cut out the background. And that works really well. Um, but yeah, it totally fits the theme of plants. We've got natural color change going on. Um, I can tell it's a box pleat model because we can see some of the grid lines that are in the leaves. And just the overall structure of the leaf is kind of a regular um, box pleat looking flap. So that's very nice, but will the showing of the grid affect voting? Generally, you know, extra grids um, on the surface might detract from some of the cleanliness and um, we'll see what people think. But very nice submission. Let's go to Hot Wheels 420 is here it is. This is by Hot Wheels 420 Bonsai Tree. Once again, totally fits this <laughs> the theme of plants and we have a little explanation here. So it's one square sheet. One side has two colors, blue and magenta, and the other has one. Okay, so this is interesting. And this is a way to get three colors with just a one square. That not only do we have the, the tree, you know, the trunk, the color change leaves, but the whole uh, bowl or pot is color changed and shown as well. So this is really cool. It's like a 3D model. Once again, it is using a lot of box plating. I can see the use of grids, some of the pleats to make the round pot. Um, but overall, the structure is really different because it is 3D. It's not like a flat axial model. And then they were even able to use a lot of the layers that make up the trunk as texture. Uh, so I think that's pretty smart. Uh, we have the color change leaves over here. You know, maybe I'm a little bit picky on bonsai trees, but I wish there was a little bit more leaves. But overall, very, very cool. Well, we have a flower versus a bonsai tree. Both are really cool. Both use color changes. Let's get on to battle number two. Battle number two is has the theme of cyborg animals. And we have a cyborg walrus versus a leopard with metal jaws. All right. So this is by Eli. This is the cyborg walrus. Um, we have some chat thinking it might not fit the theme of cyborg animals. Now, I am not fully sure what a cyborg animal is, but from my assumption, I want to see something robotic combined with uh, like an animal shape. So this potentially fits the theme. I think what makes it hard is that it's hard to understand what is fully going on. Um, and yeah, that might be hard to tell with um, everything else. Uh, you know, I, I guess the walrus head is a walrus head um, with like a robot eye, but does it sell it enough or do I have to draw some creative strings to understand that? Not sure. So this one's a little bit rough for me. Um, but we'll see as it, you know, only matters with what is battled up against you. So let's go to a uh, Bork submission, which was a uh, leopard with metal jaws and front legs. Um, so here we have a more approach of just an animal itself. Uh, now the thing is with this one is it's kind of the opposite. You can tell it's an animal, but it doesn't match the cyborg 
this much at all. So I wish even with the color change that they would have used something more, you know, metallic looking, maybe a gray, but at least it does look like an animal. So this one might be a little bit tough. We'll see what people like better between this and the Cyber Wallers. Let's go with battle number three, which is the theme of authority. And here we have Paper Forger versus Dori Yuzu. And this one is kind of a heavy hitter battle right here. Let's take a look at his uh, Paper Forger's submission first, which actually is a penalty. So Forger submitted late. Now, I personally am a big fan of the character Farina from the game. I have built that character and it is in the top 4% of built characters of Freena in um, my, I think in the world. Uh, so this is Freena. Let me crop this in. Okay. So you can see, right? Top, top 4%, top 4%. That that's me. That's me. Okay. Yeah. The color changes are really nice. That is very true. Uh, Forger is insane with getting color changes. It's very hard to color change things in the middle. And even just like flipping between the colors. So right, we have like white, blue, white, blue, white, blue on top, blue on the side for her coat, blue of the sleeves, white for her hand, blue for the back of the coats, um, white for her face and hair, and then blue for the hat. So it's kind of a crazy structure for sure. And this is like one of Forger's signature things. However, <clears throat> however, I can see... Forger's lack of time starting to come through because a lot of times he'll try to do like a button and it'll be round. But in this case, they're just little triangles. Can't see what I mean. Like this one looks a little bit more thought out. We have like triangles and circles for the pocket. So it's an actual pattern. But over here, when they're trying to be buttons, it's just squash folds. Also, the ankles here are pretty tiny. So I think some of the proportions, maybe it's just the photo, but I think this is just lack of time for being able to shape. Uh, is the leg proportions were not ready to go. But good job, Forger. You know, I'm a fan. It's Farina. Maybe it's a little biased, but... Now, let's check out Dori Yuzu's submission, which was on time. And Dori Yuzu folded Napoleon from Animal Farm. This is the voting photo, but it's not just that. So we have... It's actually wearing a mask. And I think this is a pig mask. So uh, maybe this shows the sequence, right, of pulling off the pig mask to reveal the human instead. The details of the color change in the mask and on the person is something to note. Overall, this is a really cool fold. Um, I wish the neck line right here wasn't showing and that, you know, maybe it wasn't quite as long um, proportion wise, but it's it's hard to kind of say anything bad about about this just because of how conceptually cool it is. So the uh, Doryuzu with the Napoleon fold, very, very nice. This is a very close battle. I think what is going to hurt Forger a little bit is the fact that he's late. So even if the votes are tied, Forger might lose out just because he has that penalty. All right, next battle. We have the theme of flight. And this is a person throwing a paper airplane versus a shoe bill. Okay, person throwing a paper airplane by Ruska. We can read the uh, description a little bit. So it's a hand of a dwarf in the forest. Okay, throwing his first airplane um, related to world record paper airplane. Here we have, okay, person throwing the airplane. Um, I don't think this photo is that great to show what it actually is. Um, I can see the hand and I can see that it's gripping the airplane, but it's hard for me to make out the airplane itself. I've folded this airplane before, and I think the wing should be a little bit bigger here. It should be tighter. Uh, the stem of the airplane, I don't know if that's what it's called, but the thing you grip onto, if that's bigger than the wings, it's not going to fly very well. Um, it does match the theme of flight, and I like the out-of-the-box thinking, but the execution is just lacking a little bit for my end, and also the presentation of the photo. Like I wish we got a little bit more photos, at least, of the other side so we can see the airplane and the hand on his own. Now let's check out the other submission by Fares, the shoe bill. Let's find a shoe bill. And I like shoe bills. Uh, I think shoe bills in general are cool animals. They're they're big and they, they look kind of funny, but because they look funny is kind of why I like them. I like the color changes here. It's a really aggressive squash fold for the eye um, with like a little bit of a raised uh, kind of texture just to get, you know, the eyelid 
and you don't need much of the eyelid, but even just that little bit, adding the shadow there, I think adds some fierceness to its eye. We have another angle here, which is nice, showing that, you know, the model is folded pretty cleanly. I think if anything, it's shaped really nicely and curved and rounded, except for the toes a little bit. Those are just kind of left on their own, even though there's like a nice rounded ankle and everything. You know, I don't know what you could do there. Um, it just kind of stands out a little bit to me, but overall it looks awesome. So here we have the next battle, which the theme is flying bugs. Let's take a look at these. So we have a white tailed dragonfly and then we have Ant-Man on a flying ant. White tailed dragonfly designed by Zafragi one. Um, so yeah, okay, theme, this one's kind of easy to fit. You make a bug that can fly. In this case, we have a dragonfly, which definitely flies. Um, white tail dragonfly. I don't see the tail being white. Execution wise, I think this falls flat. Um, it's using, you know, some box plate structure, but it's very, very simple. And it just doesn't have the elements of like a dragonfly. Next, the competitor is dot, dot, dot. And in this case, this is Ant-Man flying on a flying ant. Where you have Ant-Man with his helmets, shrunken down, flying on an ant. This is a superb photo as well. Using nature. And then we, we got the bokeh in the back, natural wooden log, as if this was the size of an ant, I think works super, super, super well. I, I'd say it kind of counts as a two-in-one. And here we have a 360 of everything. I'm just impressed in general from, the, from just trying this. <laughs> this is kind of a crazy model to put together. Um, so this is a really strong submission. Shout out to dot, dot, dot. This is super cool and excellent photo here. I think this presentation already on its own is like insane so great job the next battle is uh villains okay villains general grievous versus hanami let's start with general grievous from star wars this is by the folder so yes general grievous from star wars with the four arm mode holding four lightsabers so natural color change 50 centimeter double tissue i think this is a cool model for me it's it's almost there. It's almost there. I, I feel like the proportions is just what's making me hesitant on enjoying it more. So we have a level shifter here for the torso. I don't think the level shifter was necessary. I think it makes it too wide. Um, and because the body is now too wide, the arms look incredibly short. General Grievous has really long arms. He's kind of like a creepy, spindly or robot uh, dude. And then with lightsabers, they need to be even longer. It's kind of fun to say a General Grievous verse uh, Hanami. So this is by MJJ and Hanami is from Jujutsu Kaisen. Here, let me show a picture. So this is Hanami. I would say the unfortunate thing in this case is with the head. I think everything else is pretty decent, even this wrapped arm, which they didn't fold all the grid into it. So it keeps it like a clean wrapped cloth. I really like that. But the head here is missing the neck for the most part and in this case the head is almost uh too small i guess or maybe because there's no neck it appears kind of squished it's cool but because of the missed execution it's going to be hard for an audience that's not necessarily seen the show or read uh jjk but i think it's it's cool it's a neat villain to choose for sure and i like the structure in the torso, I think this is the best part of it. Just the torso structure, the abs, and then the covering for the left arm here. So next battle we have is Steve's battle. So here we have the theme underwater. And we have the funky lionfish versus the attack of the kraken. Shout out to Steve. Okay, funky lionfish for death battle with a 22 and a half design paradigm. I, th I think you're definitely selling yourself short. I'm glad you want to iterate to make it better. And it, this isn't your, you know, your final thing. You're not satisfied with this, but for submitting it, I think it's totally okay. So for one, it fits the theme. It's aquatic. And two, it's cute. I, I think it's very cute. And you can tell that it's a lionfish. It is missing the central spikes, which is a big thing. You know, I wish that maybe even you used at least one of these flaps from the tail and, and just shaped in the spike. But regardless, like the shape, the form of the fish looks like a lionfish where it's kind of like 
you know, chubby-ish. And then it has all these wavy, spiky things for its fins and its tail. This one, it looks really cute. I think you presented this nicely. Saying funky lionfish works really well. That That's, I think, strategic for not being able to get uh, anatomically correct lionfish. So let's go to who you were battling, which is Tijin. Um, but they folded the attack of the Kraken. Okay, I'm just going to be funny. I don't mean this seriously, but the theme was underwater. This is above water. Hmm. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This totally counts. It's aquatic. Um, it's a cool uh, kind of play. So Brian Chan obviously has his uh, attack of the Kraken, which is the Kraken attacking the ship. So I assume this is something, you know, the concept uh, was inspired based on that and done differently. I think this design concept is pretty cool. But uh, once again, this is an issue of execution on how it's done that is taking away a lot from the model despite it having a lot of potential. With the color changes, it's made the model a lot thicker. And this double tissue is probably too small for what this model needs to make a better looking fold. Um, so we can even see the paper creeping out from the color change of the boat here, which is not desirable when you want a stark color change to show the boat. If you look at like a boat with a sail, this isn't really how the mast works. Um, so it's a little tough there and then we see all these layers through the tentacles so you know the execution is bothering me a little bit but i think the design has a lot of potential and is pretty cool that there is like the color change suckers um this one the theme is chemistry and this is an explosive beaker versus carbon here we have anthropomorphic ape with a explosive beaker and so the concept here is that the fluids inside of the beaker are exploding outwards I think that's really fun. And here we actually have the crease pattern to show. So I think this is pretty cool. I think it is also lacking a little bit of execution because of the paper choice. So for one, the color change works. I think the green, white, green works really well, but I can see the Kami wear and tear. So there's like white here. I can see the crumples from your folding. It just, it looks like a test fold to be completely honest. And I wish the uh, explosive part was like, a, like this top started out really good. I wish it was more. To, to sell the fact that it's an explosion because this could be a really, really nice submission if it had a little bit more care into it. But I, I like this. This is pretty cool. This is maple syrup, by the way. Um, I featured maple syrup in Peacock vlog and you've seen maple syrup fold incredibly tiny things, but still having execution in those tiny things. And here we have an original design, which is carbon. And it's, it's literally like the carbon periodic table sign atomic number. So it's just a flat fold uh, color change model and using those color changes for text with foil. I think this is super neat. I wish it was a little bit cleaner still. I think here it's the foil that is hurting the execution here Be because of how foil is, right? Its memory is so crisp. If you add any wrinkles, you're going to see it. But design wise, it is super, super cool, super unique. This is the only one of its kind out of all these submissions. Yeah, that's super creative, stands out on its own. And once again, all the people voting are made of carbon. So this is like a really strategic kind of play. Like, like honestly, the topic chemistry is just really cool to do a battle on. Let's go to the this battle. This is the first of our battles that is a 1v1v1. It is a little unfortunate that we had to have 1v1v1s. It's not ideal, but it's going to save a little bit of headache later on. But unfortunately, it means that two of these designers do not get to continue. But let's check these out. So here we have a Mata Mata turtle versus a frilled necked lizard versus a Philippines sailfin lizard. So shout out to David with a fire fold and submission. But let's see this Mata Mata turtle. So it's got the long snout that is kind of flat nosed and then has some like ridges along the neck. And that's what we see here. So we see the flat nose or the, the flat head with the long nose and the ridges along. Um, very organic shaping from David, but very defined. So it's done without a lot of mushing. We can see each detail here on the shell. And then even some of these like 3D pleats that are used to create the shell textures it works as the the shell that you would see on an actual Matamato turtle. And it's shown in a way that it's it's not confusing. Like the, the crumpled lines or the pleats, they don't interfere with the overall shape of the turtle. Here we have like an anatomically correct Matamato turtle. I think that's really cool. It's photographed on a piece of like slate. 
So there's good contrast in the photo as well. So presentation, execution, got points for that. Even has closed belly. And this right here, this photo, you might be wondering, you know, why do you need a photo of the underside? Well, for voting, David is catering to some of the probably more advanced origami designers and folders who appreciate designs with closed belly. So that is the Matamata turtle. Let's look at the next one, which was a lizard. Here we are. This is by Baboon. Frill neck lizard. Also has a closed belly. Here, I think what's honestly hurting this the most is the photography of this. The photos seem to be taken on parchment or wax paper, but it's not even a fresh sheet. So like this butter paper has been, or this wax paper has been folded already. Uh, and I, that's, I don't know. It's not working for me because it kind of takes away from what you're trying to see here, which is the lizard mouth, the eye, which are shaped, and then the jaw, and of course the frill. Uh, we do have, it looks like color change for the belly on the underneath. This looks really cool. But again, I don't like this paper in the background. Uh, like I'd rather just have this book, <laughs> you know, be there, not, not this crumpled piece of paper. Okay, here we go. Silver paper, the Philippines sailfin lizard. Now this one's box pleated, right? <laughs> this one's definitely box pleated. You'd see it everywhere. This is pretty neat. We have, I think the defining feature of this is the spines. The structure is pretty neat to have both this spike layer using like the Ryujin spines or the Issei Yoshino pleats. Paper choice, I think works pretty well. It's some kind of textured paper. Uh, I think there are still execution issues just regarding some of the crinkles here. What I can tell is there's a start of some pleats to like get where the folds of the legs or the hind legs or the thigh start. But at the same time, it keeps the crease here and it makes it distracting. So it, it's hard to actually tell on this front leg where the leg actually starts and if it looks correct or not. Um, overall, cool design. Um, very nice in general. Um, but in a competition sense, is this going to outperform the Mata Mata turtle? Hard to say. Hard to say. Overall, very nice. Very nice. Okay, so let's take a look at this 1v1v1 1v1 first. This is the theme Indian mythology. And I might pronounce these incorrectly, so I, I apologize in advance. But we have uh, Narasimha, and I, I think this is Devon Shaw. And then we have Nataraja, or Nataraja, which is a dancing Shiva designed by Paul Origami. And then we have uh, Shiva by Chris, uh, Origami Chris. You guys know Chris. So these, all three of these designers are insane. So this, this is, I think, the most stacked battle. Um, for one, it's three insane designers um so it will be sad that unfortunately two will have to be eliminated in this round uh but it's really cool that we got to see such a high level of designs in this battle so let's take a look at these let's start with uh devon shaw who so happens to be an obb competition champion i think it's a sort of like lion head mytho mythological character and then you know a humanoid body with traditional clothing underneath this is really cool i think my favorite part about this is the head here like look at the detail in the snout for example we have the nostrils in the shape and then the, the front part of like the lips they're all really nicely defined and even just the slight bits for the eyes it works really well into the rest of all these layers that make up like the mane the flowiness the rest of it too is really nice i think this photo, unfortunately, reveals that the torso is really two-dimensional. So you do not get much volume here. And we can kind of see that in the back. You're, you're missing the torso volume. Um, so like if we didn't know, right? If we look at straight on, looks fantastic. Looks crazy. This angle of the photo, you can see the, the lack of the shaping here. So kind of unfortunate there. I wish it was a little bit more 3D. Um, or not even just 3D, it had just the proper amount of volume for, that matches the rest of the model. It would look insane. Um, all right, let's look at the next submission, which is by Paul. This is a dancing Shiva. This is taken to the next level. So this Shiva not only has some decorations uh, for the headpiece, but in the hands, it's holding stuff too. So in this hand, holding something, this hand is holding something. And overall, the body is like kind of crazy. We have some pleats for some details. And knowing Paul, I think the structure is actually pretty simple. 
So maybe just using, you know, bird bases um, scattered around. Um, and then just uh, what Paul likes to do is he calls it sketching. So he's just kind of free flowing, um, you know, adding some structures to probably get the fingers and the details into torso and all this sort of stuff. Uh, maybe using graphs or uh, who knows, but um, it's a very Paul style piece where like, you can tell the face, especially here, this is just shaped in. This isn't like, oh, you structured a neck with a river and a flap. It's like, okay, this is one flap that Paul converted into the neckline, the head, the ornateness in the back. Um, and it works. It really works. And Paul's good at allowing that kind of folding to still have form. So yeah, so really nice, Paul. Um, I wish, I don't know what Chiva's holding here. But uh, I think this one looks really nice. I think this one, you started to curve it. I wish these curves continued the same way. I got a little bit of messiness here, but I think, you know, that's just nitpicking. Again, this is a crazy competition, so I have to. Um, but overall, very cool. I can tell at least what everything is. Very well done. And now let's check out our third submission for this battle, which is by Chris. So this is just Shiva. And it's crazy. It's structurally insane. Like juxtaposing Paul's structure with, of Chiva, which is, you know, um, you can kind of see how it works. Uh, this one is the opposite direction where it's a structure that kind of like hasn't seen, been seen before. Like Chris is innovating in this battle with this round circle coming <laughs> in the back of the entire model as part of the paper. This is crazy. It's crazy. It'd be one if it was just a circle. It's insane that it has all these little pleat things in the middle of it. Yeah, really unique. We have the torso right here, and then we have a face shaped in. So this is really neat. Um, we, Chris has kind of used his face structure before. So signature Chris face, we have the eyes, the pupils, the jawline. We have lips, all structural, um, very neat. And then I really like this ornate headpiece on top, and it just works really well with how the head is done. It all kind of just matches up and it's got some pleats running through. Yeah, this this piece is really ornate. We have also a Chris foot structure we've seen in the past, which he's just, he's not folding toes like the fingers are folded. It's just like a textural pleats um, and another pleat to make the toes. Uh, very nice. A lot of level detail. This calf is super good compared to the other models with calves. I like that. It's just got volume. Things are lining up. Pretty crazy. Now, Chris did something differently than than other models, which is to use this um, uh, base color with like a metallic paint dry brushed on top. It's a technique that we've seen in some other models and it's used here, accentuates a lot of the features and works really well uh, for these details. But will people dock it for being painted on afterwards? Probably not. I think it is a very strategic move here. It kind of gives Chris a visual edge in his presentation and it just makes things work like if he didn't dry brush the headpiece it would be harder to see all those details um yeah chris has just been pushing his levels a lot recently so if you've seen any of chris's recent designs they're all pushing different structural or shaping or conceptual kind of levels and i love seeing that in origami um but yeah that's that's crazy. This is a really insane battle right here. And we have our last battle. Last but not least, we have also a pretty stacked battle right here. We have Dex versus Anise. And okay, we have here, you said use this for folding, building the future versus one for all, all for one. Uh, and the theme is quotations. So this th actually, okay, this theme is, this is a wild. This is uh, very subjective to anything. Here we have Dex's submission. Child sitting on a construction, constructing flying chair. Oh, okay, okay. So it, kind of the same thing, like something's being built with someone sitting on it, resting, right? While the other one is is building it. So quite literally, in this case, it's using the motif of a child as like the future and then the other generation filling into that. Um, I like that. That's, that's really neat. Uh, okay, so here we can see some of the back. So Structurally, there's a lot of good details like closed back. Yeah, once again, it's just a proportion thing. You'll learn this over time. In this case, the arms are like longer than the legs. Keep it up. This is conceptually like 
I was not doing this when I was your age at all. <laughs> not, not many people are, so very good. Okay, let's look at, okay, here you go. Ani say, one for all, all for one. Okay, famous quotes by famous people. Okay, each sheet, corner of the sheet corresponds to a character. Okay, so in uh, this theme is referencing the three musketeers, I believe, uh, to draw a parallel from the quote by looking at only view where you can see all four of them above. You can see the musketeer cross. Oh, man. Oh man. Okay. Honestly, I did not know that about this view. I think this is the, the this is the musketeer cross right here. Each character is vastly different, including one with a sword. Um so I don't even know where he started uh in this crease pattern. If you've seen some of Anise's crease patterns, they're they also kind of look insane. Uh Anise did what not a lot of people did here when working with humanoids. Which instead of trying to lean into like looking anatomically correct or even um, like well put together or something like that, he kind of made caricatures of these uh, people. So in, in that case, proportions matter a lot less. Um, now, it's hard to actually sell that. Like you need a good understanding of anatomy and proportion to be able to do this. And so... Anise obviously has that and is able to go beyond. Um, so in this case, like for these faces, uh, they're much more uh, characterized. There's uh, exaggerated features to them. And it, it works really well. And it's it's really hard to do this. It's so hard to do this. Um, but it, it comes through and it works really well. I, yeah, I, I, there's not much more to say than this piece is crazy. And I would buy this piece. <laughs> if it were for sale, uh, this would be one to have. This is ridiculous. So yeah, this battle, both between Dex and Anise, is absolutely crazy. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed seeing round one of the Origami Dance Death Battle. And if you're in the Discord, uh, give a lot of you know praise for the people participating um, in this death battle. It's not easy to put yourself out there and try to go against someone. You know, it's probably one of the scariest things you could actually do in origami is to intentionally be judged against someone else in front of the public, right? So big shout out to every single person who is participating and you can find all their informations probably from their discord accounts or if you know their Instagrams. So go give them some love, let them know even in like some of the chat channels, how much you enjoy their designs and make sure to vote. We want to see who wins. Um, but yeah, with that further ado, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm